I was at a really, really long uh, rock bottom. When Tessa Jelani was 22, she had no place to go home to. Dad rejected me because I was gay. Um, he tried to say it was face, but I was battling my identity because I thought I was just a very feminine male. Tessa is a proud trans woman, but when you don't know where you're gonna sleep at night, living with your truth takes a backseat. I'm battling my own self while also trying to take care of, you know, my, my surroundings. It got to a point where I just couldn't take it no more. And I had hit so low that I almost tried to take my life. She was in and out of shelters in D.C., shelters that would fill up almost every night. Some nights I wouldn't get there in time. Some nights I would get there too late. So some, I would just want, I would be outside. Just her and her service dog, Twinkie, who kept her going. My dog, Twinkie, when I say that he is literally like an angel, he protected me when I didn't have no one else to protect me. If it wasn't for him, I think I, I'd be in, in, in someone's casket right now. But Tessa is not alone. In a city where almost 10% of residents identify as LGBTQ, in the unhoused population, that number jumps to 40%. They find themselves on, on the street. They find themselves cast out, abandoned, abused, um, and sometimes often running from very, vol very violent situations. Monroe Poston is the residential coordinator for Shine, a local group helping house queer and trans youth. For her, the work is personal. I remember how difficult it was to navigate the feelings uh, that I had personally about who I am and, and who I wanted to be in the world and then the fear of sharing that with the people that I love the most and them to then turn around and, and disrespect me and abuse me and neglect me and hurt me mentally, physically, emotionally. It's extremely painful. We see people come in um, who are really lost. Uh, that have been through a lot. Keith Pollard works every day with unhoused youth for SMILE, a D.C. organization that currently houses about 60 LGBTQ youth in the city. SMILE's Hansi Stokes spoke with our Matt Gregory. An LGBTQ identity adds this extra layer of, um, it, it opens you up to employment discrimination, housing discrimination. If you don't feel safe in those places, if you don't have access to financial security or um, physical security, those are all things that when you enter our program, we help you address. All of our residents live here completely rent free. Um, they are connected to case management and that case manager connects them to the resources that are necessary to them. So mental health services, um, SNAP, uh, employment, education, and things like that. Tessa is one of SMILE's success stories. They not only gave her housing, but guided her to be self-sufficient and empowered. It was peace of mind to continue to find herself. It gave me room to now start figuring out who I am even more. It gave me time to take my mental health seriously. I am 25, going on 26 in August. Um, I currently have my own apartment. I have Twinkie, and now he has a brother named Scoop. And she's giving back, now working with Us Helping Us, an LGBTQ healthcare nonprofit. There are spaces for us. Um, own your space. Own who you are. Make the naysayers into haters. Because guess what? That's just going to boost you even more. I know it surely did that for me. <laughs>